This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2024 Raptor Carbon Series toy hauler. Model number 30 WFO. Okay, so this is a how-to video. Not, it's not a floor plan video. Um, I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. Now, when it comes to the back door and the bunk in the back, we'll show you that when you pick up. Because I can't really operate it with one hand while I'm doing this, but we'll we'll uh, show you everything else, and then we'll go over the the garage door and the uh, and the bunk uh, when you get here. Okay. So you have um, uh, power stabilizer jacks. You have one switch for both rear, the other switch for up front for both front. Like so. You have a power awning with LED strip, two speakers, of course uh, you're seeing uh, the garage vent up there, there's another one on the other side. Uh, this is TV signal out and then some, um, uh, just a regular receptacle, receptacle to plug a TV or anything else in you want to plug in there. Okay, front switch, you also get a, um, you're getting a weight distribution uh, hitch, 8 to 12, and it's a Husky center line weight distribution with built-in sway control, so it's a good one. We'll show you how this operates when you pick up. Okay, you have a small crank back there, that crank's to be used on this this uh, power tongue jack, if it ever was to fail because of, uh, uh, well, for whatever reason, um, and you can't get it hitched or unhitched, you can always pull this plug off the top, use that crank, and you can crank it manually to always get yourself hitched and unhitched. Okay. Okay, so you have um, your dump hose right here. You have a switch for your solar panel right and this is your solar controller now you have to download the the uh, Victron uh, app for your phone in order to see a display so once you log on to the app the, the default code is six zeros and um, it'll get you on there you'll be able to see the uh, the voltage, the amount of the, the voltage in your or the twelve. Let, let's put it this way: you'll be able to see the twelve volt voltage in your trailer system. So um, you'll you'll get an accurate reading of that. You'll be able to um, see how much uh, sunlight is being converted to electricity and stored in your battery. Um, so it'll tell you that. It'll tell you the temperature, all kinds of things. So um, you need to download that app. Uh, it's been checked out. It's been the firmware has been upgraded, and so it's ready to go. Okay, this is the uh, water hookups here. The the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup right here. Um, now, if you happen to be camping someplace that doesn't have a city water hookup, um, you can pre-fill the fresh water tank right here, and um, you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. So you can. You can, you know, using the onboard pump and the fresh water tank, you'll all the plumbing will work as though you have city water. You'll just be pumping it out of the tank, okay? All right. These are your uh, dump valves here, gray and black. Gray is sink and shower water. Black is toilet water and waste. Okay. Outside shower. This is your black tank flush right here. So after you dump your black tank by pulling the black gate valve, you can leave that gate valve open and hook your hose up at the dump station right onto here, screw it right on there, turn it on, and it will uh, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, it'll spray off the sensor so you get a good accurate reading, that sort of thing. So uh, just remember, like it says on this sticker here, to have the, the gate valve, the dump valve open when you before you turn on the water. Now this has... Um, um, on-demand water, hot water, so it's really a good thing obviously. Just keep in mind that there's this rocker switch here to turn the system on and off and there's also a fuse there but keep in mind that this is here because like in the winter 
uh, it's winterized right now, so they'll usually have it just have it shut off. So, if for some reason you can't get the uh, it to light up, come out here and look at this because odds are that's going to be the, the issue. I'll show you how to operate this once we get inside, also. Okay. Okay. That's a vent for your range hood. So, if you're going to be using the fan in the range hood, make sure you flip those little latches and let the baffle in there flap freely so it vents to the outside. You have a uh, 50 amp system here, so you got a 50 amp 30 foot cord and reducers. Okay. Uh, the other garage vent. This is just cable and satellite through. And um, you can see up there that there's actually a, a, a housing for a backup camera if you wanted to add a backup camera, okay? Um, while we're looking up, remember to inspect your roof on a regular basis. Manufacturer says every 60 to 90 days you go up there and look around, make sure everything's in good shape, no cracks or separation, no damage caused by low branches or road debris, anything like that. So make sure that. Uh, part of your regular ma maintenance is inspecting your roof. Okay, like I said, we'll go over the we'll go over the garage door and the and the bunks and everything when you come to pick up. All right. So when we come in the door here, this is your power converter. This converts AC to DC power. So you can see you got these circuit breakers here, 110 AC, just like you'd have at home and they're all labeled right below it. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC. Over here you see all the 12 volt uh, fuses right there and then next to it there's a label. So they're all labeled. This is also a battery tender so it'll sense how much energy your, your uh, battery up front on the tongue needs. As long as you're, you're plugged in it's going to send as many amps necessary to keep it charged. Of course when you're pulling down the road your, your uh, tow vehicle is going to be charging the battery. And then when you're just sitting or driving the solar panel will be converting uh, sunlight into amps and sending and storing amps in your battery so that'll be charging your battery also okay this right here next to it is the carbon monoxide LP gas detector it should always be green like it is if it's not getting it serviced okay um, so this is your um, controller for your on-demand water. Right now it's shut off because it's winter time. We talked about that. But you're just going to push this to turn it on. It'll light up. It'll tell you how, where it's set. Usually 115, 125, whatever. That's generally the limit. You can go up and down with it right here and here. You can also change from Celsius to Fahrenheit here. Um, now there is a built-in safety. So if it doesn't sense any water, if let's say you reach over and grab the turn on the hot uh, water valve for the shower, if it doesn't sense water, like like city water or water from the tank with the pump on, that sort of thing, uh, it won't turn on at all. The gas burner will not light. So always make sure you have a supply of water to it when you when you want to use it. So that's that's a built-in safety. Okay. Um, you have your slide room right here. Switch here. You have your your power awning right here. The power awning, uh, never leave it out unattended, of course. Um, don't, you know, it can, your trailer, your, your, uh, your roof and your, your awning can get damaged in just a, just a flash when you're, when you have bad weather, when the wind's really whipping up. So if you're not going to be at the campsite or you're in harsh weather, always roll that in. Uh, to turn your water pump on is right here. That water pump's used to pump water out of the fresh water tank when you don't have city water. It's also used to winterize the trailer. Okay, you have your lights on here. Um, and then of course your levels, your battery is charged, fresh water is low. Uh, uh, there's only one black tank, you know, so keep that in mind. So, um, go with black tank one and gray tank one. Okay, over here your thermostat it's uh, these all have apps by the way but your thermostat you just hold this to light it up um, pick in this case we'll have heat so it goes to furnace and um, you're all set now if you want to change it to air conditioning or whatever you're just gonna poke the mode button again until you get to the mode that you want okay and to shut it off you're just gonna hold this button until it goes off okay 
Alrighty. So let's go this way. Your keys are hanging right here. You have your TV hookups here. Um, that if you see right there, that little green LED is on. That should always be on. That's your tells us that your digital antenna is on. Okay. You have um, your sound system here, which is wired through the TV when it when the TV is installed. Uh, this has AM FM radio. It has a USB drive. It has a Bluetooth, uh, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone to your tablet. It has an HDMI in, if you want to go into the system with, let's say, a portable Blu-ray player or something, you could do that. Um, it has everything you need, so it's uh, very capable. Um, your microwave, of course, works like any other microwave. This is the range hood we talked about. Remember, there's a baffle on the outside if you want to run your fan. You can hear it winding up right now. Just make sure you open that baffle so it flaps freely. Your light. I don't know if you've got your gas on here. Let's see. So you have a sparker here. Turn it clockwise to spark. You have the three knobs for your three burners. It was just disconnected, so it's going to take a few minutes for the gas to get up here. Normally, once you once you get the air bubble out of there, you won't have to worry about this. But because it was the tanks were just switched out and and it was not um, just trying right there. And your and the air bu bubble is still in the line. You have to work past that. Okay. Once you get past that, it lights on the first click. There we go. Okay, second one. There we go. Third one. Okay. So now, from now on, now that the air bubble's passed, it'll it'll light the first time, just like that. Okay. So keep that in mind. Your oven. Uh, there's a pilot light down here, so you have to remember to you go to the picture of the pilot light. You depress it. You keep it depressed while you're lighting it. You spark and light the pilot light. Uh, hold it. After you see it light, you hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. When you shut it off, the pilot light goes out along with the flame, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Always keep this closed when you're traveling. Okay. So this refrigerator is 12 volt DC refrigerator. So just remember to keep it latched when you're traveling so you don't damage the doors, get them dinged up. But it's 12 volt DC compressor. Of course, you have a table here. Your, we'll show you this when you pick up, but you can raise and lower your bunk. You can configure the seats into bed and benches and whatever you need to uh, to do. Okay. Your your tie downs on the floor. You have these different various cleats here. Um, okay. Let me look a bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. You do have a, a roof vent. The toilet works like all RV toilets in that. It's antifreeze in there. Um, you have to use chemical and water in it when you're, uh, before you start using it. So the thing is when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. Then you'll come inside, you'll put a dose of chemical right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal, hold it down. As you're holding it down, water will start swirling down into the tank below along with the chemical and you want to put at least a gallon of water in the tank below you can use more but not less so a dose of chemical and at least a gallon of water and you're all set to use it if you don't do that that's considered using it dry and if you don't do this um, first of all it'll get clogged up second of all it'll smell terrible um, so you always want to make sure you have chemical and water there before you use it okay As we go into the bedroom here, okay, you have a clothes chute here. Uh, you have your uh, escape emergency escape window, second air conditioning, so it has two air conditioners, which is great. Uh, another TV mount here with outs and hookups, and of course you have your USB chargers and and that sort of thing back here. You also have storage underneath the bed. You can pick it up and 
access the storage. Two sliding doors. This one goes into, into your uh, closet, which is a big closet for a, for a uh, travel trailer. So it gives you a lot of hanging space and shoe storage space at the bottom. Okay. Let me come back through. Okay, so that, that about covers it. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Second of all, remember uh, the manufacturer states that you should uh, inspect your roof every 60 to 90 days. You want to stay ahead of any potential problems. You're just protecting your investment, so make sure you take care of that. And right now, this, is, uh, this trailer is winterized. All the water has been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze, so keep that in mind. It's set for the winter time, okay? Thank you.